Section 6, cracking down the interview. During this section, we will go through all of the information once again in order to understand how to think in OOP way and also what are the more um, complex concepts that are used along with OOP. In this video, I will explain you how to join the concepts that we had so far in order to create a program in the OOP way. Let's check how the thinking in an OOP way looks at the following example. We have to do a program that will fulfill the functionalities. To create objects with name, surname and generated ID, to log the properties and also to have the functionality to add the object to array with the maximum length of array set. In order to solve this, this problem in order to make such a program with such functionalities. First of all, we can make a function, make user. I called it user because it is name, surname, and ID. So the shape of this object, it can fulfill, it can work as an object representing a user. So now this make user function it takes as arguments name and surname name and surname are passed as properties and id is being generated according to name and surname Now in order to log all of the properties i can create another function and this function takes user as argument and is logging all of those properties Next it should be a functionality to add object to an array with the maximum length of array set. So first of all, we can create an array. Then we can make a function that will add objects to this array when the length of the array is less than the limit set. So we can create an object with make user function and then add this object to the array. And with this solution, all of the functionalities that should be implemented are done. Nevertheless, this approach, it is not OP. It is also not functional if we have only function keywords here and there. It doesn't make the solution functional. As it was said in the very beginning, the functional programming, it is all about using pure functions. Pure functions should have all of the dependencies provided as arguments and they should not change any state from outside of the function. So for example, this function, it is not pure because it is changing the state that is outside of the function. Therefore, we have this kind of solution and it is not good, it is not scalable. We can make it better, we can make some entities that will express the functionalities. Those entities can be represented as classes. So we can create a class that will consist of the user data. And also we can create a class that will consist of the data of the users that are in the array. So we will have a user class and user collection class. So first of all, we can remake this function into the class. So we will make a class user. This will go into constructor method. And now, this function that is tightly coupled with this data can be put as a method of a class. So thanks to this solution, we have one entity, class user, that is holding the methods that describe how to deal with the data that is part of the instance of this class. So now, as we don't want to have user array, but a class that will express the collection of users, we can make a class 
user collection. And now, instead of having an add user method that will take every single time the limit of array that takes limit, which will be checked in order to know if we can extend the array of or not. Instead of this, we can create a constructor method that will take as an argument limit, and this limit will be the part of every instance of user collection. So now, if we want to make an add method, this method will take as an argument a user object, and we will check if the internal array, if its length is less than limit set, and if it is less, then we can push an object to this internal array. So thanks to this, we have changed the previous implementation to the object-oriented one. So now if we want to make a new instance of a user class, we can add this instance of a user class to the collection with the OOP approach. So making a user collection instance, we can add a user object. So now all we have are entities that represent different data and also the logic that can be applied to this data and logic that express how to deal with another entities, with another instances. This will make the program far more scalable and also easier to understand. We have all of the logic that is connected with the data in one place. So extending this class will be very easy. If we want to add any new functionality that is connected to user or user collection, we know exactly where to put it. Let's now combine this logic with the HTML. So the question is how to make a functionality that a given user will be added to the collection and the user will be created by putting name and surname to inputs and then clicking add user button. So having user and user class, we can set some limit and create the user collection. And now what we need to do is to add an event listener to the button. As button has class add, we can just point this HTML node at event listener click and now have a function that will add to user collection a new user. So first of all, we can target the inputs. Inputs are laying inside the user's node. So starting with this div, we can then select all of the inputs. So we have inputs, we have a user class. What we are missing is the connection between data that is put inside the inputs and the data that should be provided to the constructor function of the user class. So basically we need to extract values from inputs. In order to do this, we can create here some functionality that will get this data, but if we want to do this in the OOP way, it would be better if we make some kind of parser that will return as an object that can generate the proper data from input. So how this kind of parser could be implemented? I will show you this parser class. 
it has constructor function to which inputs container is provided and then from this inputs container we can select a node with the given attribute so input name username and with the input name surname the values of those inputs will be set as properties of the object so basically parser will have a method get user data that will parse inputs into name and surname properties so now we can use this method so by mm, calling the method get user data and putting the names of inputs that should be parsed we can have now the user data object with name and surname provided so as we have user data now we can use this user data in order to produce a user object so having user object now we can add this object to the collection so the functionality is added but is it added in the oop way not exactly we have this function here this is the stand alone function that is doing this logic and it's not the approach that should be taken when we want to make a program that is op in spite of having function like this we should have a class with the method that would be doing this job so we can refactor this function into having a class that we con that will connect all of those parts so it will take the root div from which inputs could be selected it will take also as an argument to construct an instance collection that should be used so because of this we would have more scalable approach so we can have a user controller class and this user controller class will create an instance with the inputs container and also with the collection so the inputs container it is a property that is pointing all of the inputs that are the parts of the root so now the root will be passed as div with class users and thanks to this solution the class can work with different roots so it will be easier to use in different parts of code so as we can create an instance of the class we can add also a method add user and within this method we would create a parser we will get user's data from this parser we can create a user object and to the provided collection we can add this user and at the end we can check the entire collection so now we can delete this function and instead of the function we can use method add user from the users controller class so in order to do it first of all we need to create an instance of user controller so we are targeting the input container that will be passed as root when it comes to the collection we have this users collection so we can put this code here in order to make it more readable and now we can create an instance of user container and now we can use a method from this instance in order to add user nevertheless if we launch this method upon clicking it will produce an error 
the error will be connected with the wrong usage with the context. Because now, as we set this method here, this will always point to nodes of HTML, actually to the very specific node of HTML. So in order not to change the context of this, because now this method will be put here just as a function without the context, so the context will be used with the context of HTML node. So we can do it in two different ways. First of all, we can create a Lambda function. Thanks to this, it will not use the this scope of HTML node, or we can do it in the more sophisticated way. We can bind it to proper context, so the context of user controller. So now, thanks to this construct, we have a method of user controller, and this method, it is bind to scope of user controller. And thanks to this, it will work as expected. So basically, when it comes to object-oriented programming, it is all about describing a program as relations between objects. So we shouldn't have any standalone function that is taking objects as argument and is doing some modifications or making new objects. All we should have are classes, should be classes, with some data and with methods that can interact with the data. So even if we are calling some reaction for the event, this reaction should be also implemented as a part of an object, so as a method.